PGA Tour presents the 1996 Walt Disney World Oldsmobile Classic. 86 degrees under partly sunny skies, but there are some showers that are supposed to arrive a little later. We're hoping they hold off until the end of round number one. Earlier today, of course, this golf tournament played on a rotation of three courses. Let's head now to Brad Faction at the Palm, the tour's leading putter. Yes, and he's no stranger to any of these golf courses because Bradley used to live right here in Orlando. And nobody rolls it better. Ah, that was a little left to right toppler. Now let's pick up Fax for another birdie, this time at 17. Oh, Faxy boy, watch out when he gets this thing going. Sneak in. Oh. oh, that's speed control. He's got to drop it in from everywhere. He made the turn having started at number 10. Now this for yet another birdie to get to four under at the second hole. Well, it's not like Brad Faxon to be using the whole cup. Today he must be just a little off. Put that one in the right center. He's usually dead center. So Brad Faxon with an opening round of 67. Meanwhile, local pro Mike Holbert trying to save a round of 65. Boy, and this is one of the toughest finishing holes on the tour. Really tight off the tee. Did he hit it? Oh, he's going to be hating himself tonight. Nevertheless, a good start of 66. Let's go back to Buena Vista. Frank Licklider with an eagle at 14, looking for another one here at 17. Boy, and he could use him this week, being 138th on the money list. He knocked that in for birdie number seven on the day, Mark Lai, and Licklider is lighting it up at this stage, tied with Steve Lowry, who has one bogey, and he is nine under on today's opening round. We join first round action with 1996 rookie sensation Tiger Woods putting for Eagle at the par 5 7th. One of the hottest players on the PGA Tour. About 15 feet. Not going to be a lot of break in this putt. Green's a little right to left. That'll get Tiger to one under on the day. A slow start for him. Over at 18, this was just a few moments ago. Taylor Smith has had a solid year. Boy, he came out of nowhere this year, almost winning at Vancouver and then following it up at Canada the week after. Canadian Open, he, he loves it up there north of the border. Loves that shot right there, too. Back to nine and Tiger's third at the par four. Looks like a little downhill side hiller to me, Doug. It does. It is a little bit side hill, Mark. Uh, the ball jumped on him coming out of the rough. Even though he hit a pitching wedge, just couldn't quite control it. Just got to choke the club up here a little bit, flatten out the lie. Still has plenty of room to land the ball, but probably will try to land it just in the frog hair of the fringe. Let it release to the hole. It's all downhill. That's what he did. Oh, he got a lot of stuff on it. Stopped a little too soon, so Tiger checks it up about six feet from the hole for par. 218. Taylor Smith started with bogeys at the first and the second, but has since made five birdies. This for a round of 68. And a good solid finish. Back to Tiger at nine. Tiger Woods trying to remain at one under for the opening nine holes of this championship. Excuse me, back nine. Got a little grain right to left. Ball will get away to left if anything. Drill it like that. Good work. With a pair of 63s, Frank Licklider and Steve Lowry share the opening round lead. At three under par, Tiger Woods is six off the pace. Tiger Woods, who had it going yesterday, then doubled the 18th for 69. We'll pick him up here at 16 today, Mark, and he's lighting it up. 
boy is and how many times have we watched him on the highlight films opening up our show. Look at this. Eagle number 17. That would be birdie number five on the day. And Tiger Woods had put himself in a position at 17 after knocking it on in two to get to 10 under, Mark. That's right. I spoke a little too quickly. That was just a short little 30-footer for birdie. Now this 40-footer for Eagle. Oh, right in the center. So he was seven under through his first eight holes today. Not a bad start. Meanwhile, another man making a move up the leaderboard, Rick Fair. This for his sixth birdie of the afternoon, coming at the 17th hole. Boy, and Rick has really been playing well of late. Had a great week at Las Vegas. Rick Fair shot 65 yesterday at Lake Buena Vista. This birdie at 18 would match that 65 at Magnolia. That's an impressive score. Yes, it is. Uphill, left to right. That lake will affect this ball. Oh, but it just sneaks in. Great round. Back-to-back -back 65s. Rick Fair, that was for the outright lead. Haynes Stewart back at Lake Buena Vista. How about this? He's eight under on the day, and trying to get to 10 under and tie for the lead. Well, he's got a little home cooking this week because he lives right around the corner. Just leaves it a little short, and he makes that for birdie. Tapped it in, and Payne Stewart went on to shoot 63. Meanwhile, Jim Carter making some noise at Lake Buena Vista. That appears to be the one course out of three mark that is surrendering the lowest score. Well, the players affectionately call this place Lake Birdie Vista, and well named. After he turned on the backside, Tiger Woods with a birdie at the first, now getting ready to launch another one of those patented high iron shots at the sixth. Incredible how low this guy could possibly go. Getting shots like that. Another kick in birdie for Tiger Woods. His seventh of the day. Meanwhile, Payne Stewart to get to 14 under this at the 18th hole. This was for a round of 62. I don't blame you, Payne. You didn't miss many all day long. How could that one not go in? But it didn't to find 63. Now for Eagle at the eighth, Tiger looking to get to 13 under. Well, he just bogeyed the 100 yard par three seventh and just narrowly misses an Eagle there. Easy tap in though for Tiger at the eighth. Now Jim McGovern who needs a big week has it going today. He's 12 under for the championship. Good solid shot. Jim McGovern's been waiting to explode, and this perhaps could be the week for him. Now, let's go to Tiger's final hole of the day, the ninth at Lake Buena Vista. Keep in mind, he is two off the lead. Tiger Woods feeling right at home here in Orlando. Perhaps another birdie for him. He might get to 13 under. And that's precisely where he would like to get today because that puts him one behind Rick Fair through 36 holes of play. Back to the ninth now. And this to get Tiger Woods to within one of Rick Fear. Oh! Boys missed two in a row on the left hand side. I know Butch Harmon says when he starts decelerating, he pulls just about every putt. Nice move today, though, with 63. A second round 63 vaults Tiger into a tie for fifth, just two shots off the lead at the 36 hole mark. Seventy five delightful degrees here at Lake Buena Vista, Florida. After 36 holes of play, former champion Rick Fair with back to back 65s leading by a shot over Payne Stewart, Frank Licklider, and Jim Carter. Earlier today, let's pick up the action at the Magnolia, the 15th hole. Lenny Clements, who knows how to make birdies and bunches. Well, this is one hole you come to not expecting to make birdie. He punched a four iron in there, three feet. Excellent. That was for the outright lead for Lenny Clements. Let's go to Lake Buena Vista, though, and Mike Sullivan, who was also in the process of trying to shoot 66. Well, he's had a great round this morning. And see if he can get one more. Oh, right on line, just a tad short. 
Mike Sullivan with six birdies on the day. A little tap in there. Rounds of 71, 64, and 66. And a very good start for him. Also at Lake Buena Vista, Taylor Smith. Now this for a share of the lead as well. Already had an eagle at 14 and five other birdies on the day. Boy, Taylor is having a great second half of the year. Started off of Vancouver, finishing second there. And boy, he's just still lighting it up. Great round. Taylor Smith with a little 64. Thank you very much to get to 16 under par and tie himself for the lead. Several Orlando professionals involved in this one this week. Payne Stewart at 13 under this to save par. Well, he won this tournament 13 years ago. Trying to get to 14 under, yes. Payne Stewart staying three off the pace as we look at the first page of the leaderboard. Some low scores again. That's been the theme all week long here at Disney. If you're in search of one Eldrick Tiger Woods through six holes now at 13 under three shots off the pace. Moving up to the 17th and Payne Stewart. Payne hitting a seven iron. A little downwind. Ball looks a little bit left. Oh, that's going to be a very difficult up and down right there. Pilot error on Payne Stewart. Tonight. No sense in overpowering this. It's a relatively tight hole. Bunkers on the left and big rough. Bunkers on the right and big rough on the left, excuse me. And that looks like it's going a little left. Now still in the primary cut. The first little cut, no problem. Now Payne Stewart at 17. Ball is pretty deep in, deep in the rough. He's got a sand wedge. Oh, the ball's got to get up. Tiger Woods at the ninth now opened with 69 at the Palm, 63 at Lake Buena Vista, and then has two birdies today at the fourth and the eighth there at the Magnolia. Fine shot at nine. trying to turn the front side in 33 and get himself to within one of the lead with a birdie at nine. Let's go back now to Payne Stewart at 17. Payne needs to make this 12 footer to save his par. Gotta be careful of the grain. He's down grain. Back to nine. Tiger Woods trying to make birdie turn in 33 and get to within one of the lead with nine holes to play. Unable to take advantage. Okay, he'll just take it out on the next hole, a very reachable par five. Probably hit about a drive and an eight iron to it. Made a couple of long snakes yesterday at 16 and 17. So he said, I actually, I punted very well this week, but I uh, made a couple of long ones. That uh, always helps when you're trying to go low. So Tiger settles for 34 on the front side. Up to the 18th and Payne Stewart. Payne from 157 with an eight iron. That ball is right at the flag. Tiger Woods with an eagle at the 10th. So he's four under today. Now tied for the lead as he heads to the 11th tee. And perhaps today will be the day where he makes his move. Well, I told you he'd be mad after missing that birdie putt on nine. He went and took it to number 10 and eagled it. Par fives play like par fours in many cases for Tiger Woods. To 18 now, and Payne Stewart looking for a little three here. Payne has about a 17, 18 footer going downhill. It's going to move to his left. But Marcus, we talked every day this week, 
you've got to commit yourself to the green and what you see when you're putting Bermuda greens. Well, you can't be confused when you get into your stance over the ball. You better know exactly what you plan to do with it, not let any doubt seep in there. And if you miss is it because of a misread, no big deal. Right. But you've got to commit yourself to the line that you picked. Payne's 22nd on the putting stats this year, which I think is pretty good. Right speed. Yes. Beautiful putt. Stewart's third round 70 leaves him one behind Woods, who is tied at 16 under with Taylor Smith with one hole to play. Looks like he hit a drive about 330. It's remarkable when you think that uh, somebody who hits the ball as far as Davis Lover had 170 yards in here and he has 137. Well, if you look at the driving stats if Tiger were qualifying right now with enough rounds Gary he would be hitting it 20 yards past John Daly which means when Daly was hitting eight iron he'd be hitting wedge. Unbelievable and that's what this is. Which fooled like a lot of other players coming into the last here today. There's just a touch more wind than you would anticipate. The Tiger on the fringe will still have a pop at his birdie putt. Well, there are any number of players, Gary, that are going to have a run at this championship. It could be a wild finish here yeah, tomorrow. It's, it's really going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Anytime you got this man in the hunt, it adds that extra element of excitement. Huge gallery out here. Well, the scores up today, of course, I think the wind is the main factor after two rounds. 14 under par was leading and right now it looks like 16 under par. Possibly 17 under par might be leading after three, so the wind has definitely cooled the scores off. This putt will be a little bit slow. The first part is uphill. about as good as he could have rolled it Gary. Tiger Woods stubbing his toe at the last. And giving up a shot. First bogey of the day, a round of 69. Ooh, that caught a lot of lip right there. All right. Tiger Woods with a bogey at 18, shooting 69, trailing by one. Let's get caught up on the rest of the field. If you're looking for experience in a PGA Tour champion, Jay Hiles would be a good place to start. In 20 years on tour, he has played close to 600 events. He's finished in the top 10 108 times, won nearly $6 billion and nine titles. He starts this championship Sunday tied for the lead in the chase for his 10th. Lenny Clements has been on tour for two decades, and while he's long on experience, he's short on trophies. Lenny's best finish is second twice, but that could all change after his 18-hole experience today. Compared to Clements and Haas, Tiger is a babe in the woods. He's only played in seven events as a pro, but he's already claimed his first victory. To win for a second time in three weeks, this Tiger will have to claw his way through a wealth of wisdom. It's been said that experience is the best teacher. Today, thousands are waiting to find out who did their homework. 
a made-to-order day for Championship Sunday. 79 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Welcome to Lake Buena Vista, Florida. After 54 holes of play, a foursome atop the board at 16 under par. Earlier today, Payne Stewart, who knows how to go low at the Magnolia, he holds the course record of 61. He shot that back in 1990. Well, he's got to feel confident about uh, shooting a low round here. Knows he can beat this golf course, and he's going to have to today if he's going to win this golf tournament. Payne Stewart would knock that in for a quick birdie at the second. Speaking of birdies, and guess what? An eagle and a hole in one today. That's for 28 on the back side and for a round of 64. I right, shot a very lackluster 36 on the front side, but nothing lackluster about this back side. Meanwhile, Taylor Smith, who had 64 yesterday at Lake Buena Vista, this at the second hole for birdie. Well, he's found himself in some pretty high caught. He's been in this position one time before, but not against this strong of a field. He played in Vancouver and finished second. But he's not intimidated here, is he? That birdie at two fueled him to two great shots at the fourth. Knocked it on in two and had a chance, Mark Line, to pick up a couple of shots. Boy, and if you can make an eagle in this kind of Shoot out here, you feel like you've uh, you don't have to work as hard on the next hole. That's for sure. See if he can get this one there. Uh, an easy birdie for Taylor at the fourth. Payne Stewart also birdied four, but let's pick up his progress at the seventh. Yet another chance this time to get to three under, 18 under for the tournament. Well, Payne Stewart has really come to town today. Means business. Uh, and you got to keep up the pace when young Tiger Woods has made an eagle at four, a birdie at five, and he's right on your tail at seven, thinking about another birdie. How many times has this guy just come to the plate and deliver during a last round? The sign of something to come. How about a birdie at eight and the outright lead? First to get to 20 under. I think the leaders at the end of the day are going to have to be at least 20. Oh, yes, just got it there. But guess what? Payne Stewart's playing with him and says, listen, I can play. Can you top this? I need to make this to stay one off the lead. It almost looks like a little match play going on here between Payne and Tiger. Now it's Payne's turn. Mm, Payne Stewart made a par at the ninth to stay at 19 under. Tiger Woods, though, trying to save par. Of the kind you don't need on Championship Sunday for par. A disappointing bogey. He turned in 33. But yesterday, after a disappointing ninth hole, he went on to make eagle at the 10th. No eagle today, but a chance to get back to 20 under and the lead. Oh. Yeah. Sign of a great player to follow a bogey with a birdie. Payne Stewart made par at 10, so Tiger Woods chiseling a one-shot lead over Payne Stewart. Let's head now to the 11th and the second shot of Payne Stewart. Good pin position today, tucked right over the bunker on the left-hand side. Players will be able to throw it a little bit past the flag so they can be able to back it up because it's on a, this green slopes from back to front. Solid move by Payne Stewart. Beautiful play right underneath the hole. Payne Stewart, I would suspect, relishing the opportunity to go shot for shot with Tiger Woods here today. Now let's see how El Tigre responds. Well, Payne Stewart has won himself a couple of majors himself. Tiger's got three majors to his credit, all being the U.S. Amateur. He had to punch it under that magnolia tree that guards the right side of the fairway. Look at this, though. Excellent golf shot. Wow. A lot of different ways to get it there. Tiger Smith, Payne Stewart dueling on the magnolia back in 1990. Payne Stewart with a course record of 61. He's hoping for somewhere in the neighborhood of that today and perhaps win again here at Disney. 
to 11 we go now. And Tiger Woods with an opportunity to increase his lead to a couple of shots, at least momentarily, if he makes this putt. It's an excellent play he made up to this green. Had to punch it under some limbs of a magnolia tree, and the pin was very much out of the way for his shot. And he just hooked it right around that bunker in front. A lot of touch on that shot. Tiger's putting straight downhill here, so they'll have to be tender with it. Oh, and look at that race. Back to the 10th tee, and uh, Arvin Ginn right now having a conversation with Taylor Smith, and I think what they're doing, Mark, is basically looking at the grip on the putter. Yeah, the uh, rule on that is that the, if you have two grips on there, they have to be exactly the same, and they, they have to be round. If there's any reminder whatsoever in either of the grips, it's uh, officially out of play against the rules. Back to 11 now, and Payne Stewart, huge throng surrounding the 11th green, largest crowds in the history, 26 year history of this golf tournament. Payne Stewart now to tie for the lead. Oh, and he's got it just where you want it uphill, right to left breaker. Stewart's already made his four. Tiger looking to do likewise. Well, he just was not careful enough on his first putt. When you have a downhill putt that's even thinking of being down grain, you got to be careful. Bogey for Tiger Woods at 11. He is now tied for the lead to the par 3 12th. And Payne Stewart now tied for the lead with Payne Stewart, Nolan Hankey, Taylor Smith, one off the lead. And we will keep you updated as to Taylor Smith's dilemma right now with those uh, grip problems on his uh, extra long putter. Donna, there's just a slight breeze out there. Is that going to affect club selection? Yeah, it's uh, right behind the players, 159 yards. I think this is an eight iron. Wind's moving a little bit from left to right and down. It was a good swing, Donna. Ball needs to stay in the air. That's fine. It's about pin high. Again, the yardage, 159 yards, crosswind. I would think that Tiger would hit nine iron and didn't even have to jump it. Especially after missing that little putt, he's probably a little steamed. Kind of a foolish year at this stage of the game, Don, I think. He just wasn't uh, mindful of that uh, downhill, down grain putt he just had. Well, we talked about Bermuda and, and how you have to be so careful and commit yourself to the line and which direction the grain is going, you can't take anything for granted. He's throwing that ball straight up in the air. Oh, what a shot. Well, he's going to come back in a big way from the mental miscue at 11 with perhaps a birdie at 12. Payne Stewart now, Donna, trying to take the lead, but it probably is just for a moment. Yes, just for a moment. You're right. 18-footer downhill. Green's moving from his left to right. This should swing an awful lot to his right. <laughs> With Payne being from this area, he's very used to grainy greens, although these aren't grainy, but Bermuda greens is what I'm trying to say. 
Well, he's been playing in this tournament for a lot of years, Don. He won it way back in 1983. And feels very comfortable on these golf courses. And working with Dave Pels on his putting, sees a dramatic improvement there. Didn't hit it, I don't think. No, he did. Played a little bit too much break. Up ahead at 14 and Brad Bryant, who has come back a long way and the chase to successfully defend his Disney title. Oh, and that's a seagoer there. Oh, ho. he had to play about four or five feet of break there, folks. Magic's not over yet, perhaps for Bryant, as Tiger Woods just kicked in that little birdie putt. So Tiger back into the lead by a shot. And back to 14. And when the week started, the heat was on Robert Gomez. And boy, has he played splendidly this week. Boy, it's been on him about the last five weeks. And I thought he'd get over the hump at Las Vegas, where he spends a lot of time. And he missed a cut there, but came back well last week and this week. And back now to Tiger Woods. Donna? He's put the ball absolutely perfect with that long iron right in the middle of the fairway, 112 yards right to the flag. Pins on five steps over the bunker that guards the whole front part of the green. And I think if he carries it just a little bit past the flag, he'll be able to spin the ball back towards the hole. He has three wedges in his golf bag, which is... Uh, Probably 90% of the players on all three tours now have adopted that philosophy. And hi. Another fine short iron. Tiger Woods with a one shot lead. After a splendid play with the iron, Robert Gomez now for the payoff to get to 18 under and to within two of Tiger Woods. Boy, he is not out of this golf course, uh, out of this golf tournament. If he could get a couple more going in. Ooh. Back to 13 a moment ago and Payne Stewart. Payne only has 72 yards with a wedge. That ball is right <coughs> at the flag. He's to check up. Shot for shot, Stewart and Tiger Woods now. Taylor Smith now with that putter in hand. And Mark, uh, what is Taylor electing to do right now, especially after having talked already to Arvin Ginn and realizing that that club is not conforming? Well, he's, he's going to probably try and make an appeal at the end of the round. He is unofficially disqualified until uh, further notice. Uh, he's going to probably claim uh, that he probably didn't know, and he's been putting with this putter all year. Uh, but I think it's a dead issue right now. I think uh, they have made their decision. He's just electing to play out and just any form of protest. Uh, you know, if he walks in from the 10th hole, he's dead right now. So at least right now, he's got trial by jury. All right, let's go now to 13 and Tiger Woods for birdie. Tiger looks like he's got a little uphill putt. And I like Tiger's putting stroke. If you notice his routine, it's amazing how he repeats the same thing every time. And this is something that most golfers could watch and learn from. Very solid stroke. He stays down nicely with the putt. Get down. Go, quite hit it, had the line. It's been amazing to us, David, how well and how low Tiger Woods has played, having seen many of these golf courses for the first time. It is amazing. I guess that's just the sign of youth, though. The fact is he's not scared of anything and really just going for all his shots and has the game to do it. If you were to compare Tiger Woods and Payne Stewart, can you do that uh, in a nutshell, David? Well, I think you're talking in terms of obviously the, the classic swing which Payne has, the fact that it's very wide, looks a little more handsy through impact. Where if you look at Tiger's swing, it's one of immense power, one of leverage, one, he's one of supreme coil. He winds it up on the backswing, immense rotation through the ball. If you look at Payne through impact, he's actually very square through impact and uses a lot more hands and arms in order to hit the ball. So a little more of the old style of swing. So it's amazing if you look at one which is pure power and one which is really more pure rhythm, you're looking at two uh, opposing styles of swing. And uh, that's what it really, if you look at so many players these days, obviously there's no two swings exactly the same, but I think if you look at Tiger's swing, you would have to say 
That is the modern golf swing. Payne Stewart now trying to tie for the lead. Well, this should turn a little bit left to right downhill, so he's going to be very gingerly with this. Stay up. Oh, oh. It had a notion. To 15 now, and Robert Gomez earlier today, Nolan Hinky made an ace at this par three. <laughs> Trying to tie the skin, wasn't he? Let's go to 14, Donna. Yesterday, Tiger knocked it over in two. Well, Denny, he's 252 yards just to the front edge. The pin's on 25. I think this three wood is plenty of club. He's got a great lie. He cut the corner, learned his lesson from yesterday, took it down the right side, carried maybe two or three bunkers. Enormous drive. This has just got to be a smooth three wood. He'll probably yeah. try and cut this one in. Yeah, he is. He's aiming way left of his turn. You know, it's 250 to the front, another 25 to the flag stick. He can't fly this ball too far on the green or it'll sound all the way over it. This green is kind of knob shaped. About the first 20 yards is uh, slightly uphill then it starts fading away from the players. Taking a little left to right will take some yardage off of it so and it'll land softer. Didn't cut it. He hit it dead straight. Oh, and that's what happens when you catch two, catch the ball too flush. He didn't slide it, and it added about 15 or 20 yards onto that shot. Well, he failed to get it up and down yesterday from behind the bunker, and he's going to have a bit of a dicey play there because I think he's got a downhill lie. But as good as he is out of the sand, I wouldn't count for out of the picture. Gomez trying to get first into the clubhouse, Mark Lai. <laughs> he has pulled to within a shot of the lead. 14 and Payne Stewart. Payne from 110 yards with a wedge. Ball's right at it. Right at it. Payne Stewart firing another volley. You talked about uh, the short game of Tiger Woods, David. We've had a chance to watch him operate over the last four to five weeks, and what he does from the bunkers is nothing short of astounding. Well, it takes a great imagination to be a great bunker player because obviously there's all sorts of different lies and situations that you have to contend with. And Tiger, obviously having practiced a lot over the years, that the fact is he's got a great imagination, and as a result, you see some great shots. He's got. It's amazing for a man who hits the ball so far. You always hear the old theory that if somebody hits the ball or has a lot of power, Reader has a poor short game, but it's certainly not the case with Tiger at all. And it's, it's wonderful to sort of see this young guy come out and really take the game by the scruff of the neck, as it seems so far. Over to 16 now, Robert Gomez, who has made five birdies today, two in a row. He has one off the lead. Boy, and this is a very dangerous flag stick to be too aggressive with. You saw what Larry Nelson did. Knocked it all the way over this green pin is all the way back. Left hand corner. Oh, and there it is. He's in an aggressive mode trying to make birdies, uh, but a little bit too aggressive right there to the par 5 14th and the bunker play of Tiger Woods. Well, you're right. He's at the back of the bunker. He's going to have to pick this club up abruptly. He has some green to work with. Negative is it's down grain cross green. I saw him last week pull off a couple unbelievable bunker shots and he had this huge smile on his face like I didn't know I could do that either folks. Just like that play. How it could leave it below the hole that is amazing. With 17 under par for the par fives this week. Well, there really aren't any par fives for Tiger. They're basically par fours, and every golf course he plays, really, it's a par 68 before he tees off. So uh, I'm sure if he feels he make, if he makes par, he feels like he's dropped a shot. Donna, what about a read? 
This is about a 10 footer is going to move to his left. Again, that green runs from the back of the green to the front and maybe a little bit cross green to his left. That Payne's marker and line was right on Tiger's line, had to move his marker over. So Payne's going to get a great read off of this putt. You know, David, you were talking about his putting motion, how he shoulders and arms all one motion. But what I think is so impressive is how he keeps his head so steady and doesn't look up until after the ball is released, which I think after you're out here a while, you look at the hole before the putter it ever hits the ball. had a bit of pace on it as well. No fear on that stroke, that's for sure. Well, there's no time to be timid either. Back to Taylor Smith at 12. Still fighting, trying for two. Robert Gomez, who may Pay the price here, Mark, for being a bit too aggressive. Get up, get up, get up. But he wasn't playing for second coming in there. No, he wasn't. He started the week just trying to make the cut. Now he's trying to win. Now Payne Stewart trying to maintain pace with Tiger Woods. And Donna, you can almost start to look at this as a match play situation. And we know how well Tiger has fared in his young career in that situation. Well, absolutely. And, you know, talking to Payne this morning, he was talking about how Tiger, you know, he's, I, he says, I'm not familiar with that type of game, you know, how far he hits it. And, you know, when Ed Fiore sort of went head to head with, with Tiger a few weeks ago, you have to play your own game. You let him go ahead and bomb it and then try and beat him with a putter or, you know, making a couple putts. One, one way to make a birdie, Donna. That's right. With a par at 15, Woods remains one shot ahead of Stewart, who was first to play at the par 4 16th. David, uh, a synopsis of Payne Stewart's pre shot routine. But pretty much the same. I've seen it over the years. Makes a practice swing back behind it. Looks very comfortable getting over the ball. And a couple of waggles. Always keeps the club moving. You see, shuffling his feet, gets the club waggling. And he's always in a very relaxed state before he starts the club smoothly away. Really doesn't alter at all. Aggressive play, taking it all the way back to the flag at 16 now in Tiger Woods. Tiger's 109 with a sand wedge. Payne Stewart told me that Mark Russell of the PGA Tour came up to them and said that they were on the clock. They're a little bit behind. Get up, get up, get up. All right. That'll speed him up. Yeah, a couple of good birdie chances at 16, and that'll help you pick up the pace. Payne Stewart to tie for the lead. Payne's 12 footers downhill, but it's into the green on this side of the green. Could fall just a little bit to his right. Oh. Hit a little bit too hard and wouldn't take that break, Mark. Yeah, he punched it right through the break there, Donna. Up to 17 a moment ago. And Robert Gomez for birdie. David, is there a, a key or two to reading these greens here at the Magnolia? The Bermuda greens are very tricky, and I think a lot of the players who are, well, not to rub it, but <laughs> uh, I think the fact is if you're used to bent greens, uh, they're always going to be tricky. It's great to see Robert playing well. He seemed to be a player a few years ago you thought was really going to do fantastically well, but it uh, looks like he's coming through now, finally. Tiger now to open up a two-shot advantage. Seven-footer straight up the hill. I think he hits it firm enough, takes all the breakout, and whatever green. He makes it. Well, I guess if this were match play, Tiger would be two up heading to 
17. It's stroke play and he still has that advantage. Tiger would maintain his one shot lead heading to 18 where he is first to play from the fairway. This young man Donna seems to love the theater as much as Seve used to. Well, you know, he loves the pressure and he rises to the occasion. He's 162 yards. No, he's backing up. Smart thing to do. A little, little gust of breeze came up. Starting all over again. needed just a little bit more to stay up on top. One of the reasons why he worked so hard at that shot a few moments ago this effort by Payne Stewart. Payne 168 to the hole. Ball's right at it. A talented twosome heading towards the 18th, separated by a shot, but who knows what will happen when they're finished putting out. Could be a brand new ball game, who knows? What a day for Orlando golf. I was going to say, it's almost like listening to the starting lineups of the Orlando Magic. Woods is first to putt for birdie. He wasn't quite as aggressive with that one. Now Payne Stewart with a chance to get to 21 under and tie Tiger Woods. Payne's putt about 10 feet. Could move a little bit to his right, but he's putting uphill. So I would think that if he kept it in the hole, maybe split that edge, he makes it. This is another cute pin placement by the field staff. Oh, it is a dandy. They're really good at picking out the best spots on some of these greens. They'll find a slope and find a little two or three foot patch that's contrary to that slope. Mm -hmm. Hence, these guys are taking good solid looks at these putts. Don't know what else he could have done there, Donna, to get that one to drop by an eyelash. Payne Stewart with a heck of a run and a great roll, but just couldn't get it to drop. Tiger Woods now. Don't even want to think about what happened yesterday when he three putted and missed one this size to drop out of the lead. Well, the surfaces are a little bit smoother than maybe yesterday when players were playing with amateurs. Less traffic on the greens now. Not too much with this putt, pretty straight. Tiger Woods with a final round 66 battled all the way with Payne Stewart. That was fun to watch. It's been a remarkable few months for you from coming from winning the U.S. Amateur to now winning two <laughs> PGA Tour events. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. An awful lot for a 20-year-old. Uh, we have to congratulate you. <clears throat> well, I think this win was, uh, you know, I think very special in, in its own right. Um, 
basically because this is now my new home. And, and uh, it's kind of nice to, uh, to win in front of your you know, hometown crowd. And uh, you know, I was uh, really excited. And uh, you know, I could tell some of the people out there were too. We've noticed that you get a pretty reasonable crowd when you come out and play. <laughs> Do you enjoy, it seems that you really embraced the situation today. You had to play with Payne Stewart. How was that for you? Oh, Payne's a great guy, and uh, we were talking about there. He's inviting me over for ribeye tonight. If I <laughs> Maybe he, he said, it, I'll, I'll buy you a beer, but, uh, you know, I don't know. You're 20, Target. You don't got to wait till you're 21. <laughs> what people don't know won't hurt. <laughs> It's unbelievable, but uh, we now have to talk about the fact that you're going to the Tour Championship next week. Right. You can win a million dollars in eight events in your wildest dreams. Did you think you could do this? You know, I was just hoping to get my card. Uh, <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do, just come out here and have seven chances at uh, getting my card. If I, that didn't happen, I would go to Q School. But, uh, you know, Luckily, I was, I was playing really well coming off the amateur, and um, I think that momentum carried me into uh, the, the tour ranks, and I've, I've played really well. Well, we congratulate you. It's uh, incredible to watch you play. And, uh, you know, I think at the end of sporting events, they say, where do you want to go? I, I guess I'm going to Disney World now. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I think he's pretty much taken the guesswork out of that. A proud papa looks on. How many more will he win before it's all said and done?